Hello again, and welcome to what should be hopefully the first of many technique videos, where I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the ways that I get my models on the table really, really quickly. Now, all of the stuff that I'm going to show you today, hopefully, will seem really simple, because with any luck, it is. The idea that I want to get across is that you don't need to be painting to win a painting competition every time you put a model on the table. The most important thing we've got here is the fact that when these, this guy here is finished, he's going to look pretty good. Okay, this goes for anything. So um, RPG miniatures, for example, if you've got gaming figures that you've got in a board game, or you happen to be painting some Warhammer figures, they look better on the table when they're painted, but they don't all have to be competition winners. That's that's the takeaway here. Okay, so I have here. This is Lieutenant Lockley, and he has come to us. He's visiting from the 41st Millennium. He is a member of the Cadian 8th Infantry Regiment, and he's volunteered to assist me in this demonstration today. So thank you very much, Lieutenant Lockley. He is going to be painted using the array of colors behind us here. And the idea is that I'll be able to show you some of the most basic techniques that will still make him look pretty good once he hits the table. Now, we're going to start off first of all, I'll explain. I sprayed him, uh, I undercoated him with Zandri dust. That's this can over here. Wow, my camera can do that. That's pretty cool. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you can get a variety of colored sprays from a number of different manufacturers. Uh, Army Painter in particular, they do some good generic colors. Uh, Games Workshop, there's, they try to color match their uh, potted paints. And they're really good if you've got an army that you want to be a particular color very quickly. Ordinarily, most people will paint from a black, gray, or white undercoat. Uh, black being one of the most forgiving. If you've got the opportunity to use a colored base uh, undercoat, then that's a good idea. Now, once I sprayed him with Zandri dust, I've then gone over, and you can see sort of in the corner here, um, and I've given him a quick blast with some Zandri dust from the pot. Now, the reason for this is that spray tends to have a slightly different texture because what you're trying to do is give the paint something to adhere to. Acrylics, they don't just stick to plastic or metal particularly well. So these spray base coats, sorry, undercoats, I keep mixing them up. Very sorry. These spray undercoats are designed that they give the paint something to adhere to, a painting surface. So if I go ahead and I make a mistake while I'm painting this bloke and I want to touch him up with some Zandri dust from the pot, if I do that without having first touched up the, the base coat, um, it will be noticeable. It'll be hard to notice, and if you put them on the table, you'll probably never see it. But for the purposes of being thorough, once you've done a base coat, for goodness, once you've done an undercoat with the color that you want to use, if you've got a spray for it, you want to go ahead and quickly touch it up with one of the colors from the pots, okay? So, so what we're going to do first of all is dry brushing. Now dry brushing, I'll put him down there. I've got the big old dry brush here. Hello. Um, as I say, you, you can see how these things take a beating. Now what I'm going to start with is Tyrant Skull. And that's this sausage here. Now dry brushing, this will seem a little bit weird. So I will show as best I can in the middle here. I've got a thing of, um, this is not toilet paper, but um, kitchen towel. The reason being is what I'm going to do with it in a second is quite rough. And if you're doing this over toilet paper, you're just going to, you're going to rip it to shreds. It's not going to work. So I use a slightly tougher paper. You can use pretty much anything. It helps if it's got a little bit of absorbency to it, um, especially if you're going to do dry brushing with a, a normal paint. You want to take out some of the, the water from it. You know, you don't want it to be as, as wet. These dry paints, luckily, if you haven't seen this already, this is what they look like on the inside, this sort of curdled cheese looking stuff. Ugh. Ugh. And it's designed, it doesn't run. <laughs> I think it almost fell out there. Um, so what I'm going to do, get a little bit on my brush. I'm going to try and work it into the bristles. I want the whole thing to really have this paint in it. Now when I'm dry brushing, you want as much of this off as you can without it being completely bone dry because what the technique is doing is going to be to ignore 
these recesses. So if we look at the leg on the miniature here, you see these, these deep sections of detail. If I go ahead and I brush across like that, the bristles here are going to go into these recesses and I'm going to miss out on catching the edges. So what I want to do instead is go against the detail, against the grain, like if you were chopping wood or something. Uh, now as another top tip, if you've got too much paint on your brush, it's going to be a disaster. The best thing that you want to go for here is to add more paint if you need it. So I'm going to quickly just touch on the side of his base there to see what I'm going to leave behind. You see? Easy. So let's go ahead, that's a little bit more difficult with the camera in the way, let's go ahead and just quickly bash on some color there. Now you can see it catching the very edges of the uniform, and I'm just I'm going over the whole thing. It doesn't really matter if I'm going to make a mess here, because we're going to tidy this up. It's a bit of a challenge to see what I'm doing, if I'm honest. Okay, so going against the grain here. You can see all I'm doing is just quickly back and forth across the surface of that detail. It doesn't take much, but it starts to pick up and it will build up that color as you go. So you want to be careful you don't put too much on because not enough, you can add more. Too much and you're going to start all over again. And that's a pain in the ass. So we're going to quickly blast around there. Make sure I catch the edges of his sleeves, down there like that, catch the edge of his hat. Okay, so what we've got here should now be a little bit of variation in the color. You see, it doesn't show up quite so well on the camera like this, but those high points on the model are now showing a little bit of that brighter color. So there is some variation in the shade, and that'll be really handy when it comes to making him look a little bit more three-dimensional. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start tidying him up. Uh, the more that you paint, you want to be always sort of working up and tidying as you go. So I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to get out his base coat for his uniform. So I'm going to use Castellan Green for this. Give it a bit of a shake. Some of these paint pots, they tend to close up if you're not careful. So I'm going to get a little bit of paint out on my palette there. And then just a tiny wee dab of water. Um, you don't want much at first. Like if I show you that again, I'm really just, just getting enough. And the idea is you just want it to flow. You don't need it to, to run off the brush, but you want it to flow off the brush. So let's get a closer look here. And I'm going to try and, there we go, start covering that on all his armor plates. Now you'll notice it doesn't cover perfectly at first, that's okay, because we're using quite a bright uh, base coat here. So I will need to go back over and do two thin coats rather than one thick one, because if I go ahead and I do one thick coat of this paint, uh, it can leave brush marks, it can obscure detail, you know, you really don't want to do that. It will, it will not look as good. So all of these armor plates, I'm now going to go make them green. I'll be back in a second. All right, so we've gone and painted in all of those areas that were going to be castle and green. So that's all of his armor and the casing on his weapons. A little closer. Yep. Except for where his uniform has been done, everywhere else I haven't been very careful about where that green is going. So particularly on the back of his bolt pistol here, a lot of that is going to be um, metal. But I've just painted it green because it saves me time versus painstakingly making sure that everything is going to be just in the right place. So if you're going to paint something again later with a new color anyway, don't worry about getting your early base coats on it. Okay, it will let you paint much, much quicker if you're not fussing about trying to make sure that everything's always perfect. Okay, a model can be incredibly, uh, what's the word, messy until those last few brush strokes. So what I'm going to do now is uh, finish off the rest of those details. I'm not going to record me doing all of those because you know it's just putting paint on the model. So I'm going to very quickly blast through, get all of his base coats done. I'll talk you through when I get to those and then we're going to give him a wash or a shade depending on what you want to call it. 
Okay, so here we have Lieutenant Lockley with all of his base coats applied. Now, I've finally figured out what setting I wanted to take off on the camera, so hopefully it won't shake around too much anymore. <laughs> but you can see here that the, you know, the, the paint itself, it's not particularly exciting. You know, I've, it's tidy. I've taken my time and made sure that everything has a nice solid base coat. And that's important. You want to make sure that the color itself is solid. So in particular with the, the armor plates, I did go back and I touched those up again to make sure that they were really going to be nice and, and sharp. So as you can see, except for the uniform, there isn't a lot of, um, what is the word? Not a lot of depth to them. You know, you could put them on the table, especially if you were uh, looking at playing a board game or something, you could just put them down like this. It wouldn't be too much of a problem. Now, the reason why I sort of glossed over the these base coats and how that goes on is that there are plenty of tutorials. There are, you know, it's not a difficult step. Just putting the paint on, a little bit of water and, and some patience, that will go on fine. You know, dry brushing and this next stage is what I really want to show you. So we're going to take Agrax Earthshade. Now, Agrax Earthshade, um, this may very well be magic. I, I dare anybody to tell me that this isn't ground up fairy wings with a little bit of brown and black ink in there. This is, this is the business, okay? This is, <laughs> this is how it works. All right, go ahead. Now, sometimes you'll hear them say, oh, you want to make sure that you've not got too much on your brush. Nah, shush. You don't want to overload it, really, that is true. So I'll bring them up here. And all I'm going to do is very carefully, not, uh, just jam this all over the model. I want this whole model to be covered in Agrax Earth Shade. Now this shade is going to run into the recesses of the model. You can see that happening already. But it will leave the high points sort of untouched, un uncolored, unpainted. Um, now if you were wanting to do this a slightly more precise, a slightly more, you know, a nicer looking way, then you would step by step use a different colored shade for each part that you were painting. You'd use black on a metal, you'd use uh, a flesh tone on the skin, for example. You'd still use Agrax Earthshade on as uniform, but the idea being here is that for expediency's sake, and certainly for uh, ease of use, Agrax Earthshade covers everything really well. It's fantastic stuff. Uh, so I'm going to quickly Letter all this on and you can see already just how much of a difference that's making. It will dry matte so if it's glowing at the on the camera at the moment don't worry too much about that it's not going to look like that when we're finished. So the thing you want to avoid with these washes is try and keep them from pooling too much at the base of the miniature. So you see around anywhere that there is flat details um, I'm going to try and sort of pull it away from those those flat parts because I want it to settle in the recesses. I really want it to accentuate those uh, those crevices. So around we go again. Just making sure I haven't missed anywhere, and I have. So you know, once you started putting these washes on too, you want to get the whole thing done in one go. The reason for this is that if it starts drying, you're going to get these weird tide marks where it's uh, you know, two layers of the wash have met and have not quite dried properly together. So make sure you are chucking it on fairly quickly. Uh, there's nothing really to panic about. You don't have to, to, to sprint through it. But you want to try and avoid coming back to it later. You know, do, do try and get this done all in one fell swoop. As I say, let's we'll put a little bit more on his face there, accentuate that a little more, that'll dry. Um, it looks really daunting when it first goes on, like uh, Agrax Earthshade is quite a strong looking tone when it first appears, but trust me, once it's had a few minutes to dry, it will calm down some, and then, you know, you can not panic. So as you can see, I am just going around and making sure, like I said, it's not pulling too much anywhere. I do want it to settle, but I don't want it to clump up on any particular flat details, so... Anywhere that's not uh, not really detailed, again, let's draw it away from the edge of the brush there, edge of the brush, edge of the bolt pistol. 
Um, make sure I haven't missed anything. Let's just put another little bit in there. Same around this side of the face. So I'm just going to quickly sprint around again, make sure I haven't missed anywhere. And then I'm going to put him down and I'm going to let him dry. And that will be the hard part done. That will be most of them actually painted. So just make sure that you can see that. Like I said, it is messy and looks awful. But we'll get to that again in a moment and I'll show you what it looks like when it's dried. That will make a big difference. Now he's not quite dry yet. You can still see some of those recesses are wet. But look at that. You know, what a difference a shade makes. And that is, you know, flat colours after a dry brush on his uniform and a wash. And that's what that looks like. You know, that is about as simple as you can get as far as putting a model on the table and having them look pretty bloody, pretty good, if you ask me. Um, I'm going to go ahead, though. Now, while this wash is still wet, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you just how to make that pop a little bit more with a technique called edge highlighting. So we've covered dry brushing, we've covered washing or shades, depending on what uh, the company involved calls them. We'll go on to edge highlighting. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. What we've got going on here is we're going to take a little bit of paint of a slightly brighter tone than we've used already and we're going to paint a thin line across the edge of a detail. This works particularly well on things like armor, um, anything that's going to be unnatural, so you know, armor, weapons, um, something with sort of a ceramic bent to it, anything that you want to look hard and uh, yeah, this is a this is pretty simple. So I'm going to get myself. Now I've used Castellan Green for the armor. I'm going to get myself Lauren Forest. <laughs> so a little bit of paint. Now that you see how that's collecting there and and flowing around. That's too that's too wet. So I want it. You see, I'm not adding very much at a time, really. I want it to just start flowing back together. So if I take my brush and I run it through that puddle, I want it to slowly start closing in on itself. You know, I don't want it to flow. So let's make sure I got a little bit on my brush there and I'll bring him up close as I can get and still get a picture. And I'm going to just very lightly run the edge of the brush along the edge of his armor there. And you see that gives me that illusion of a really hard edge. I'm actually going to swap in for a smaller brush. <laughs> I forgot that's a little bit more fiddly than I'm used to. Uh, Once you've painted 300 guardsmen, you don't need every bloody one of them to look like an officer. But for the purposes of this demonstration, oh bloody hell, sorry I didn't realize it had gone quite so blurry. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll go ahead and we'll make them look that little bit nicer. So up here again, go you see I'm just going to use the edge of my brush here along this hard edge so rather than trying to paint a straight line with the very tip of the brush I'm cheating and just using the edge uh, there are some places you won't be able to quite do it like that like along this edge here for example getting in behind the, uh, the pistol's barrel would be quite difficult but I'm going to go ahead and just go around all of the uh, all of the armor plates and just do a little edge to catch that so there you go you can hear it again when I'm concentrating I start whispering but what this is going to do is not only is it going to make the armor look hard it's going to introduce a little bit more green to the tone and that's good because once you've got the Agrax Earthshade over the top it does blend everything together into that same sort of muddy brown tone. That's not a bad thing. This just introduces a little of that original color back into it. It looks quite nice. So along the edges of everything. Now you can, like for example on the shoulder pad here, I can go ahead and I'll just do the whole edge of it. And then if I wanted to make it look even harder still, oops that might be a bit much, oopsie daisy. If I want to look even harder still I would use an even brighter green only right on the very edges of it. So that can be a way to, again, fake in some detail. Um, I think I'm getting the hang of where to hold this thing when I'm bloody well painting it, so you can see what I'm doing. 
that's nicer. So you can see along the edges where it started to look a bit more green. I'm not going to bother with his gaiters because uh, I tend to think they look a little better, still dark. So let's close that up. I'm going to do the same thing for his face because faces are another fun one that once they're painted that little step further, they look way cooler. So what I'm going to look to do here is this sort of a T shape to follow. There we go. I'm going to paint really thin line on his nose and on his cheekbones. Um, oh goodness, this is a bit of a challenge at this angle. I'll also do a little bit around his chin there too. And the corner of his jaw. You know, anywhere that you just want to accentuate the shape of a face. Um, think makeup. You know, in all seriousness, think of how you would apply makeup and you're not going to go too far wrong. You want to really bring out the shapes involved. So there, I'll give you a picture of this all at the end when it's finished. But uh, there, you know, it just brings out a little bit more of that shape. So what I'm actually going to do now is finish them all off. And um, I'll give you a picture of him once he's finished and he's had his base put on him because that is really as simple as it gets. That is base coats, that is dry brushing, that is a wash. And you can see, I mean, he's still drying, but that's actually pretty cool. I'm going to put him quite happily in my guard army. And uh, he's taken me, I mean, without, without uh, drying time, probably about 30 minutes to paint. So these techniques are really simple. And you can see I've not used a huge number of paints either. That's one of the real bonuses to using washes, is you can get quite a range of colors without having to buy 800 bloody different paints. So I'm going to go ahead and finish him off, uh, show you a picture of him at the end once he's all done. But again, hopefully you found something useful in here that uh, gives you a little bit of a pointer on what you want to be doing with your own miniatures. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch. Pop them in the comments or uh, send me a message and I will try and answer. So thanks for your time guys, enjoy the rest of your day.